All right. Looks like we've got a lot of folks on the line here. Hello, Liz. Hello. Ah, excellent. Good mic check, too. <laughs> I guess we'll give people a few minutes to join. Slides are up and we'll wait a bit for folks to come on in. Hello. Excellent. Yeah, we've got plenty of folks on the line. Liz, I will let you start on your call whenever we are ready. We're only a minute past, so give. Yeah, should we give it a couple more minutes just to make sure anybody who's coming is going to come? So you could get started with the preamble. Yeah, I'm just um, there's a cr Thanks for putting the slides in. Yeah, I was just having a look to see who's here. All right, Amy, you're going to mark attendance and all that. Yep, drop in the right. working deck. We'll work from there. Okay, cool. So, um, I guess we can get started. Welcome, everyone. Uh, normal. Rules apply. Uh, you've all found this meeting, presumably. So marvelous. I don't know why we have that logistics slide. <laughs> Maybe it's helpful. Oh, it's mostly because, the like, the, uh, for folks coming in and actually finding these slides ahead of time. But we, like, here is where we all are. Just so that you Fair all enough. know, if you're not on this planet, good enough. Fair good enough. Luck. All right. Uh, all right. And uh, yeah. So mostly today we're going to talk about the six, uh, and then we're going to have a quick look at uh the there are a couple of projects that are waiting for toc folks so uh we'll be hassling ourselves to uh, to look at those uh and then hopefully michelle is with us is michelle here um because i know she wanted to talk about the graduation process a little bit yeah i'm here yay awesome all right, let's take the SIGs in the order in which they're listed. So hello, SIG storage. Hello. <clears throat> so um, just last week, we did a couple reviews, uh, one directly related to SIG storage, which was for Rook. Um, we're leaving the commenting open until tomorrow um, for a week to get make sure there's no outstanding issues. We personally don't have any concerns for the SIG, um, from the SIG for graduation, so we would recommend to graduate. Uh, Saad has volunteered to be the TOC sponsor for that, so we feel like that's in, in good hands. Uh, the second project was given to us from one of our SIGs uh, to review Harbor as it has a storage aspect to it. Um, we do have a couple concerns around its graduation mainly uh, two of them. The first one being there's some external requirements to Redis and PostgreSQL. Um, we know that in the past that's been one of uh, kind of the red flags of having that as being part of the base pro product. And then the other one is <clears throat> the default deployment is not HA out of the gate and the user must then go configure that separately. So it's not HA uh, natively. That somewhat worries us. Um, that would, of course, need to be talked to um, with the TOC, but those were our two concerns that came out of our investigation of Harbor. And then for the backlog of Dragonfly, we've completed our review and sent the feedback out, and then we still have the same four things in progress and are continuing to work on them. And that is that. Are there any questions? That uh, thing about uh, high availability for Harbor, is it wh where you say it can be, or it must be configured separately, is it easily configured separately or is it the user must jump through many hoops? So I can I can speak about that if you don't mind, Liz. Mm. Uh, so hi everybody, this is Michael, I'm one of the maintainers of Harbor. 
So essentially, the hardware has many components, and Redis and Postgres are the only two of them that we deploy out of the box without an HA configuration option. And we do that for a few very specific reasons. There are readily available operators and ham charts that customers can use to deploy Redis and Postgres in an HA way. So for the folks that actually do want to deploy them in an HA way, they, they do that uh, very, very easily. Um, and the second reason is most of our customers don't really put a single instance of hardware on one Kubernetes cluster because the cluster of Kubernetes becomes your unit of failure. And that's a problem for them, especially if you're using hardware to be the vehicle for basically uh, hosting all your cloud native artifacts. So what customers instead do, they deploy hardware on two separate clusters and they use hardware's replication, which is a very widely used feature to replicate assets from one hardware to the others. That way they have two highly available hardware instances with each of them with their own copy of Redis and Postgres and they put a global load balancer in front. So if you guys remember when we did the TOC presentation, uh, one of our customers, VPay, came on board to show you that architecture where there are two hardware instances replicating each other and each of them being individually hosted. Um, so that's the, that's the reality today. In addition to that, hardware team is working on an operator that will enable customers that are looking to deploy Redis and Postgres uh, in an HA mode uh, to enable them that. So we are also working on that. So that, that's basically where we are today. Thanks, Michael. And I, you know, I didn't look at the PR this morning before this call, and I noticed that some, you know, a lot of this information has been updated. So thank you for doing that and contacting Saad directly to have that in the, the PR, our due diligence. Yeah, no problem. Um, and, and my question now that obviously now Harbor has gone through the due diligence with the six, I also want to ask Liz what the next step is. Um, I was going to just check with Erin or Six Storage generally, do you believe that Six Storage has finished its review or is it still an ongoing discussion? I don't feel like we would do as an exhaustive due diligence um, since we were just looking at a secondary piece of it. Um, you know, it, it looks like the concerns that we brought up have been noted and there's plans to fix that. Whether or not that meets the criteria for graduation, I would have to yield to the TOC for it, but I feel like we're done. Our comments are put in. We don't need any extra time. Okay, that's cool. So I think Michelle will talk uh, a bit later on about uh, trying to streamline the kind of graduation process, but it sounds to me as though for both these projects, we have the kind of documentation in place for the TOC to, you know, review and start forming our opinions on it and uh, Normally, the way this works, I don't know if we have a TOC sponsor for Harbor yet. Yeah, we do. It's uh, Jean. Jean was a TOC sponsor. Great, great. Okay, so um, the way this would normally work is that person would um, uh, be responsible for determining whether, you know, basically saying, yeah, at this point, I think we're ready to call a vote. And normally, at, by that point, we will have discussed it and uh you know raised any questions we have so um yeah i think the next step sounds like it's for us to review the comments and content that are in those two um i guess if i click on those issues or prs we'll find all the documentation there yeah just just as a, a small side note here I, I think harbor has been a bit of a special case because it, it's it's just been such a broad project um, that a number of different SIGs were, were involved. So it's it's um, it's probably had uh, more feedback in separate PRs than, than a traditional, than most graduation projects, I guess. So. And that's a good thing, right? Getting input from across the community is a very, I think that's one of the nice things about having the SIGs work together. So thank you everyone who spent time looking at this. Yeah. Um... Uh, we reviewed it on SIG runtime, so I have a mini update a little bit later. Great. Yeah. Great. Okay. Uh, any other questions on SIG storage, or should we move to whichever one is next, which I didn't memorize? Okay, let's move to the next SIG. It is revealed to be SIG security. Sarah, I think I saw you here. 
Sorry, I was muted. Skip over the slide because I forgot to remove the placeholder. So we have a few new members. Um, uh, we have links here to some recent presentations. We had a really great presentation from the, um, the Financial Services User Group about um, Kubernetes threat modeling. That video is well worth looking at. We're also thinking about can we take those assets and make them available more broadly because the threat modeling isn't unique to the financial services sector. Um, the Spiffy Spire security assessment is in progress, just kind of wrapping up. We're doing the, um, Brendan is leading that and doing the final PR with the team. And um, we had a great presentation just in February. And then we also wanted to highlight, um, because we haven't had one of these meetings for a while, that Clouds Custodian came in des in December. And um, uh, I just recently reviewed their presentation where they started through the assessment process. I really want to kind of call out to Cloud Custodian for uh, helping us and being patient with us through the process of um, kind of defining the um, project onboarding a little more clearly. So um, thanks to Liz's recent documentation, I caught that they hadn't um, had a, um, you know, there was no record of their proposal interest in the TOC repo and they filed an issue and um, also wanted to call out there's a, there's, there, there's an open issue now about um, it's not clear when the PR happens. So I think we'll roll with it with Cloud Custodian. We're in close com communication and we'll figure out how to make that happen, but, um, and then um, update the docs. So it's clear. So we're just test driving the new docs. Thank you everyone who participated in that. I think it will get better if we all chime in. So um, upcoming, we've got Cloud Native Security Day um, um, at KubeCon AM, a, um, Amsterdam and then, um, we had an election. Thank you, everybody in the TOC who voted um, asynchronously. Um, uh, Justin and Brandon have prior commitments for today. Um, Emily, if you're on board, maybe you could say hi. I didn't actually check the participants. Um, but I was thinking it might be neat to have a um, like, TOC meet the check leads Q and A. We could have like a virtual um, session if people are interested. Um, and uh, um, just want to call out that um, just these are three fabulous leaders who have been involved in making the SIG what it is. Justin Capos was doing um, work on security for the TOC as a TOC contributor before the SIGs were a thing. Before our previously known as SAFE group got together. Emily Fox um, <clears throat> joined us last year and was um, with Michael Ducey, led the very first Cloud Native Security Day at KubeCon San Diego and um, de um, has been incredibly um, contributing to our governance process and just came in and cleaned up all the docs where there were confusions, which is great. And Brendan, Brandon has been with us for a long time and um, really took leadership in terms of triaging the issues in the repo and has been a security reviewer on each of our initial assessments and is now leading Spiffy Spire. So um, just really excited to have these tech leads on board. Thank you, TOC. Um, So um, a quick overview of our projects. Um, we SIG security, so you can go to the project board at any time to see what's on deck. We have SIG security day in pro progress as well as the first five security assessments. This is not the only thing that SIG is doing, but these are the things that we're trying to coordinate mostly across many peoples. So next slide. Um, the security assessment queue, we have, um, Cloud Custodian should probably be moved into in progress. Um, it's not their self-assessment is almost there. We've actually kicked it off. And then Spiffy Spire is almost done. And um, next up is Falco is uh, working on wrapping up their assessment. So, um, so we've been 
using this um, project board to kind of help us remember how we have to nudge things around. And that's been kind of helpful. Um, and just to remind everybody, we are collecting all of the little hiccups in the security assessment process. And there's been a bunch of questions from the SIG about how did the security assessments and from the projects themselves, how does the security assessments work with, um, like how does that relate to the TOC phases? And we've officially decided not to document that and finalize that until we've done five assessments and we can reliably say how long they're taking and how much effort from the project. And then once we have that settled, um, our current thinking is that um, the self-assessment would, would be required during the sandbox phase, but the review and the finalization of the security assessment wouldn't block any movement. So we want the, the project itself to be documenting its kind of risk profile, but not keeping it from progressing if it is maturing in other ways and the TOC is, has no concerns. And we haven't flagged anything that's big. So we're still working on like exactly what that is, but that's our current thinking. Yeah, I feel like for, for sandbox projects, it's a, it's a nice thing to be able to start looking at the security posture of a project, but it shouldn't be a requirement. It, it, I don't know, maybe you should be looking at making that a requirement for incubation, you know, so that it happens to a project while it's in sandbox. Yeah, I think that the, um, the we don't want to put a big burden on the project. We just want to figure out how we can relatively early get the project to kind of commit to its path towards actually having its security concerns met. And maybe, you know, we'll talk more about that before coming up with an actual detailed proposal or detailed Sounds process. Sounds reasonable. Sounds very reasonable. So next slide, I think, is about Cloud Native Security Day. So we have a lot of registrations. Hopefully everybody will stay healthy and this will stay on track. Um, we won't have open spaces this time just due to constrained physical space. Um, but we have a bunch of great sessions queued up and um, and then we're also kind of looking at, there are some people who from our, um, from SIG Security who can't travel due to um, restrictions. And so we're looking at maybe having some virtual um, sessions where people are gathering socially at KubeCon. Maybe we can gather socially virtually um, people who can't make it there physically. So, um, so we're looking at augmenting KubeCon timing with some virtual something that doesn't get in the way of um, people who are there, but kind of builds community outside of people who can travel to Amsterdam. So that's that's our update. I don't, I don't know if there are any questions or if you just want to keep moving, Liz. If anyone has a question, please shout now. Otherwise, let's move on. Thank you very much, Sarah. Who's here from SIG App Delivery? I think I see Brian online, but he has not yet unmuted. I was, but um, Harry's going to do it. So yeah, Harry, Brian, to say hello. something. <laughs> yes. <laughs> do you want to uh, talk about SIG App Delivery? Uh, actually, hi, uh, Harry is here. Uh, so I will talk about SIG App Delivery. Great. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, in Stake Delivery recently, we actually have uh, three projects uh, in the uh, under review, which is which are Kudu, Captain, and Build Packs. And Build Packs is for incubation, so it will maybe take a longer time than expected. So Captain is uh, under uh, ongoing review um, very quickly, and we, we are discussing that maybe uh, Captain need another round of presentation again because it actually was presented in the SIG very early and during that time, the process is not quite ready. And uh, so uh, we, we think that Captain may, may need another round of, a round of a presentation. Unless they think uh, there's nothing changed during such a long time, I don't think that's the case. And for build packs, uh, we need to start to draft the uh, review documentation. Um, in, regarding to that part, we need to sync with the um, project maintainers 
um, to get help from their uh, their perspective to start the uh, uh, the recommendation documentation from uh, from the from 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 the um, their own template and from our existing template. And for Kudu project, we actually need some suggestion from uh, TOC. Uh, we have talked with our uh, CTO contact person. I mean uh, um, uh, Michelle and uh, and uh, Kihi. And we can actually uh, talk about more details uh, during the TOC discussion. And on the other hand, uh, we also need some, uh, uh, we also request some update, request some update from TOC about the Argo and operative framework, which we have already sent the recommendations, I think, and quite a, for quite a while, but um, there's still no update yet. And uh, regarding to the working groups, so this is actually um, um, one of the most important thing we are, uh, we are recently doing, and we actually created two um, the working groups, which all have a lot of feedback. So the first one is the AL Gap to working group. We have already bootstrapped to this working group. We had our first meeting and agenda, and we are now uh, working on kicking off the charter documentation. And for operator working group, we also bootstrapped it, already bootstrapped to the working group with many interesting parties. And now we have already begun to work you know, work on the uh, drafting uh, to drafting the chart documentation. And uh, we also call for uh, contributors to finish that part work. Yeah, this is pretty much about the CGAP theory update. If you have any questions, please let us know. Great. So for Argo and Operator Framework, I think we're coming to both of those later on. Uh, so yeah, there's, there's a slide that covers both of those. Um, Qdo, I think maybe falls into the same category as Operator Framework right now. So again, I think we'll come back to that. Um, Argo is something uh, I'm reviewing. Um, if I can jump in here, Liz. Sure. Uh, so I have, I've reviewed the recommendation and the proposal um, and I'll put my comments into the pull request. I think my main concern is like Argo is a great project, it's mature, lots of people are using it. It seems to meet all the criteria. Um, my only hiccup here is, and this is something that was brought up by SIGAP Delivery too, is that it's a collection of projects. And generally what we've seen is that the projects that go into the CNCF are, it's like one main project and then maybe there's an ecosystem of projects around it or maybe they have incubating projects um, to help the community uh, or some notion like that. Um, but Argo is, is this set of tools um, that, that are in a toolbox. Um, so that's, that's what makes it a little bit different and I think we just need to have um, a conversation around that. Uh, other than that, I don't see any um, hiccups uh, there. So um, I'll put that in the pull request and we can continue the conversation there. I've been reading the um, uh, TOC principles document and reviewing the other projects just to make sure that I haven't missed an example like this one, but I haven't uh, come across anything helpful so far. So just warrants a discussion, that's all. Am I right in thinking that Argo and Cortex are merging or intending to merge it's a uh, flux the uh, flux sorry yeah yeah i knew i'd get the name so, wrong. Yeah. <laughs> okay okay all right hello sick runtime hey everyone um yeah, we, so we have a few updates. Uh, we review a few projects. Uh, uh, so uh, first we have Volcano, which is a batch uh, processing uh, in Kubernetes. Uh, so we reviewed it and uh, we went through the template and uh, the original template that the six actually put together and uh, uh, we recommended it from for Sandbox. Uh, so right now it's looking for three sponsors. Um, I think the uh, Klaus, who's the maintainer, uh, sent out an email to the TOC mailing list looking for sponsors. So if you're looking or interested in this project, uh, uh, we're, uh, hopefully you can sponsor. Uh, so that's for Volcano. Uh, then we had a presentation for CADA uh, at our last meeting. Uh, 
We also reviewed that project and uh, uh, we really like it. It's uh, basically a Kubernetes event-driven auto scaling. So it fits well into the serverless ecosystem. So uh, we need uh, uh, two sponsors now. So thank you, Liz, for stepping in. Uh, uh, so yeah, this is a very interesting project uh, that um, I think fits pretty well with the CNCF and uh, how we can enable serverless with uh, uh, Kubernetes. So that's uh, Keda, and we also review Harvard for graduation, and uh, we're also recommending it for uh, graduation. Uh, so there was some talk about or some slides about six storage, and so they reviewed it and they have some concerns. So I think it's more up to the TOC now to review it and, and, and find out if the, they want to vote for it. Uh, so I, I think hardware looks pretty solid from the runtime point of view. So that's why we think it, uh, you know, the, all the comments were addressed on the due diligence document. So that's why we recommended it. And we have a, a virtual kubelet coming up for uh, review, right? So uh, we, uh, it, it's on the schedule in the next meetings. So we haven't had anybody step in and say that they're going to present. So, but we'll we'll still have it in the schedule for discussion in the next meeting. Yeah, and then and that's it for the in, for the update. And any other any questions? Okay, sounds like that's. Pretty straightforward. Yep. We heard about Harbor before. So yeah, great. SIG Network, who do we have? SIG Network. All right. Hello, Lee. <laughs> Good morning. All right, well, we have uh, a few projects. Uh, and actually, uh, let me ask this. Is it possible to do a refresh on the slide for those of us who are tardy on some of our notes? Uh, if that's too much hassle, no, no problem. Maybe. But All right. Let me see what happens when I do this. Let me stop it and come on back. There. There's, there's a price to be paid okay, there. You're not the only one. <laughs> you are definitely not the only one here. So let me give it a quick refresh in here and we'll come on back. Right. Give me a second to run back towards your slide directly. Sure. Good. Well, that'll, we everybody that'll... Else. Here we go. Oh, gosh, you did have plenty more in there. Go ahead. Everyone else can thank me later. So. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you now. It's all good. Uh, very good. So there are three projects uh, or, or four that are kind of um, uh, under discussion. There, there are two that are currently under review. Uh, the first uh, project on the list is Contour. Um, Contour is proposed for incubation. As such, uh, we've gone through a presentation in the SIG and, uh, and the, the project representatives are preparing for due diligence. And so um, Michael Michael, who I think might still be on the call, is uh, focused on getting Harbor over the line and I think we'll be coming back to engage in due diligence with um, Ken Owens. Uh, and take the project through that. The, a note there, uh, Contour was proposed right around the time that we were having uh, you know, new you know, board seats shifting around. And so of the two prior sponsors, Joe and Alexis, um, uh, who are no longer on the TOC, though we're, that project is going to solicit new sponsors. And so in many respects, this is a public call for new sponsors for Contour. Yeah, th thank you, Lee. I'm, I'm still on the call. Yeah, absolutely. So since we lost two out of three of our sponsors, Matt Klein being the last one, uh, we'll, what we're working on is we'll finish up our due diligence with uh, SIG Network and working with Lee and, and, uh, and Ken. And uh, we're also asking if anybody else is willing to sponsor the project. Remind me, this is for um, Sandbox, is it? 
it is for incubation. Oh, it's for uh, incubation, okay. Yeah, so when we had talked about Sandbox, we had, at the time when that discussion happened, we had uh, the three sponsors who could have uh, been accepted into the Sandbox immediately, but we decided to go for incubation, and which is why we started going down the path of the due diligence. All right, so we actually only need one TOC sponsor to, but they need to kind of step up doing that due diligence. Um, that, that, that's right. Yeah. So, yeah. so we, 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 Sandbox would have been a done deal, but we said let's try for incubation since we have a significant momentum in the industry. And uh, so now, we, given the fact that TOC changed, rotated, we might need new sponsors. Right. Hey Liz, it's Matt. Um, I would be happy to do that. There you go. <laughs> Solved. Nice. Thank you, Matt. Very good. Uh, the other project that's under review right now is Service Mesh Interface, or SMI. Um, the, this project is aimed towards proposed for the sandbox. And so the SIG network is uh, hopefully is finishing up review uh, maybe later today or certainly by tomorrow. Uh, and it has its three uh, TOC sponsors. And so, and so we expect uh, this might be the, the first project to kind of come through the SIG, it should be great. There's a, a couple of projects uh, on the backlog. First one up is CNI Genie. So I'm not sure if there's a representative of that project on the call today, but uh, if there is, or if you're listening later, um, please come and present at this Thursday's SIG network meeting. We'd love to go through the project and get familiarized. There are a couple, uh, and then another project mesh read is kind of uh, out there on, on the backlog as well. Uh, there are a couple of white paper initiatives, um, one of which is further along than the next, potentially, or not potentially, but is. Uh, one of them is cloud native networking principles. And so this is you know, largely stewarded by uh, Watson of the uh, CNF conformance uh, group within the TUG, the telecom, telecom users group, um, had worked for what looks like quite some long time um, documenting, uh, well, helping telecoms understand CNFs. And, and how they're described. And so there's been a proposal that that would be incorporated into SIG network. And so that um, folks are, are welcome to weigh in there and, and review those principles. On a related uh, initiative, there's a patterns and reference architecture, uh, kind of a, a working group that's been proposed within the CNCF. And this one, um, it, the content of it has an immediate focus toward service mesh, uh, but I think it has an inclination for its charter to be broad across essentially all of cloud native. And so there's a discussion that we need to have. Um, we need to um, invite the, invite those constituents to SIG network to, to, to reconcile, see if we can't produce a single paper or, or set. And that's, that's it. Thank you, Lee. Any questions on SIG Network? Okay, so I think got a couple of new SIGs forming. Which one's on the personal list? Paris. Do you want to give us a quick update? I am here. Hold on, I'm in a, not really a cave, but kind of a cave. <laughs> I'm playing Eeyore today. Uh, <laughs> Hi, everyone, all 79 of you. Welcome to my cave here that I have no light with. Um, hold on one sec, let me get to the deck. All right. Um, so really, really briefly about SIG contributor strategy. Uh, we've met a few times now. It's about two to three. I uh, included the meeting notes in the deck. Um, <clears throat> I did go ahead and submit the charter uh, our work in progress charter. Uh, Amy kicked us out of that repo, wants us to start a new repo. Yay. Um, but I wanted I to see your here. own repo. Yay. I know we're, we're, st we're stoked. We're stoked. Um, 
and wanted to see if the TOC could just vote on that and then we'll move the we'll move the charter to the next repo. Um, but if there was a couple minutes, I wanted to just at a high level go through the charter verbally. Is that okay? Yes, go ahead. Okay, cool. All right. Um, so hold on one second. Let me get a link for those that don't have the deck and still want to follow along. So hold on one sec. I'm going to add that in chat right now. All right. <clears throat> chat has the charter. All right. Um, so again, for those that um, have not joined a previous TOC meeting, this is a uh, contributor experience like SIG, uh, but this would be high level advisory uh, focusing on uh, things like community health checks for projects to make sure that um, they're doing uh, really good things and making sure that they're thinking about certain contributor contributor related issues early on uh, so they don't have to get to that uh, later on and retrofit it, um, something along those lines. So um, this is a big SIG. We have three stakeholders, uh, CNCF projects and our contributors and maintainers, obviously that's the biggest one. Uh, but then next also would be the end users and the broader community of, of member communities, our member companies, I'm sorry. Um, and the reason why this is a stakeholder for us is we'd like to educate this population of people on multiple things, a how to how to best contribute to projects that are currently uh, in CNCF, as well as how projects can best get feedback from them uh, and just help that process out a little bit more. Uh, the next stakeholder is obviously the TOC, being an extension of the TOC and helping them with research, as well as their own community groups and meta community group issues. Um, things that I wanted to call out that would be in scope um, again, things like this idea of a quote community health check, like what you've just seen with a couple of the other SIGs where they go through projects and give their due diligence and opinions, same thing here. Uh, and we would pit that, Josh Berkus is on the call right now, Josh would be uh, doing things like uh, uh, open governance checks uh, and stuff along those lines. Um, things that I wanted to call out as out of scope that um, I've been calling out this entire time just so that there's no confusion. Uh, the day-to-day -day operations of CNCF SIGs, Kubernetes SIGs, or any group or any community group of CNCF. Uh, this is not the place where um, you would get your day-to-day -day contributor experience stuff done. Like you cannot hire a community manager here, for instance. We could help you figure out how to hire a community manager, for instance, uh, but we will not be your community managers. Um, and then I went ahead and did a roadmap as well, just a really brief roadmap in the, in the charter, just as, uh, so you can see like how we would get this bootstrapped. Um, mainly has to do with obviously discovery, the formation of some working groups that we've already identified. Uh, and then also uh, that start of that checklist and that due diligence for, for projects. Um, proposing myself and Josh Berkus as chairs of the TOC so allows us. And that's really it at a high level for the charter. Um, obviously there's much more detail inside of the charter. Uh, and our first sort of kickoff, if you will, would be a work in progress, um, a work in progress issue, our first issue in that new repo that I linked inside of the deck. It's called the maintainer circle uh, with the goals of training maintainers, collaboration points on size large open source issues, camaraderie, bringing people together, listening, etc. So on the listening tip, I'll end there. Uh, does anybody have any questions, concerns, comments? I have one uh, question or thought, which is uh, over the last couple of weeks, I think, or while I was on vacation, uh, we had the idea of, um, well, the realisation that maintainers and the TOC basically at the moment have no real kind of particular communication channel. Um, and we talked about perhaps setting up a, a one-off or an infrequent kind of TOC maintainers call so that we could flush out um, issues or concerns from the maintainers. And I'm just wondering whether this should be, well, the maintainer circle should be that or whether that's a separate thing. I think 
I don't know. This feels like overlap. Yeah, yeah, no, I was going to say it sounds like this could be that for you. Um, I mean, you know, in many, I mean, there's 79 folks on this call. I guarantee you half of us have been to some kind of leadership circle thing before, right? Where we're like, we have all these distributed peers and we all are in our own silos, but we all come together and try to work on like open projects together. I feel like that's what open source is missing from leaders, right? Like we don't ever come together really. Um, I mean, I do in like at these like other external events like OzCon and like Maintainerati and like Open Source Summit, but as far as CNCF is concerned, we don't necessarily have that like here, right? Like that community. Um, so I think that like what you're trying to achieve and also I wanted to talk to like the GB reps too, because the GB reps mm-hmm. obviously have that door too. So I think we could all get everything we want achieved under this umbrella and have like a really good um, micro community set up that has really good inputs and outputs of communication. That would be great. And I think it would streamline it if we just have the kind of one maintainer yeah. circle. I like that. Yeah. yeah. Great. Any other comments or questions from anyone? Okay. Thank you, Paris. Uh, and I think we've got, think we've got Matt for SIG observability. Hello, everybody. Um, so I'll be uh, kind of brief, bright, and gone here. Um, in the chat is a pull request. Uh, over the last um, over the last month, we've had uh, uh, three uh, different meetings uh, across a uh, community of folks that have come out, um, uh, and I think we have uh, consensus on our, our charter. Um, and so I've put in the actual pull request as well as uh, uh, sort of a human readable, more eye- eyeball friendly uh, uh, link uh, in the in the chat. Um, our next steps are to confirm uh, our, our the, the the liaison to the TOC, uh, and then have uh, you know the TOC uh, have a look at our charter, give us feedback, and or vote to approve it. Uh, as I understand the process, is then the the TOC uh, 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 selects and or approves uh, chairs. Uh, and then the TLC and the chairs together um, uh, choose tech, tech leads. We have uh, a lot of interest uh, from both uh, vendors, uh, the user community, uh, and then the turnout's been very good and positive. And um, I, I think the working groups have been uh, productive and uh, uh, we're all very excited to move this forward. Uh, so I think that's basically our update. Uh, we're in uh, Slack at the CNCF Slack. Uh, there's a mailing list and there's a repository uh, link there. Uh, so that's that's where we're at. That's our update. I think the charter is probably a little long to to walk through in this call, but um... all right, wonderful. So the uh, charter is ready for TOC to review, right? Correct. Great. So TOC folks, please put your comments into that PR and then uh, we can have a vote on it. I would also like to just give a shout out and say thank you to everyone that over the last month uh, has contributed to it. Um, uh, it's, a, it's a long list, so I won't, I won't read all the names here, but they're in the charter. Uh, so thanks again, and I look forward to um, what comes next. Great. And I have to, I'm going to just add to that and say thank you to everybody who's been enthusiastically getting involved in these SIGs over the past few months. I feel like this has really uh, expanded the scope of what the, I'm going to say the TOC community can can do because yeah, you're all taking on some really important work. So thank you very much. All right, is it uh, a question? Yeah. Um, mm. Liz? Uh, the, um, this observability charter that we want to approve um is it in the tfc repo or is in the sig observability repo it looks like it's in the sig observability repo and i just want to clarify some of the charters are i i can take credit for accidentally pushing uh pr to the wrong to the wrong place uh so the the link that i uh 
I put in the slides as well as the chat is to the SIG observability repo uh, that uh, Amy recently created for us. Uh, and that's, um, I think that we're gonna, we'll shore up the, the, the other one, uh, but, but the current version's in, in the link there. Okay, great, thank you. And there was a question in chat from Paris. I just was <laughs> taking myself <laughs> off mute to say, yes, uh, if the contributor strategy uh, charter is ready for us to review and vote on that, same deal for that one as well. So TSC folks, please put your comments in on, on that one as well. Um, Amy, can you keep us honest and send us out a link to the charters for both of these two to yes. chase us all to review that? Wonderful. Which is good because now we can move on to projects waiting for TOC input. Hooray! All right. Okay, so um, we heard about Volcano and CADA uh, being reviewed by SIG Runtime earlier. Um, so I went through the process I think it feels to me like the first time that we've gone through actually this quite structured process of getting the recommendation uh I reviewed the thing from Cada I watched the presentation to SIG Runtime I have to say I found it pretty helpful and straightforward the way all the information was collected together there so felt to me like this process might actually be working um, so I'm going to just call on other TOC folks. If you, do you have any comments or questions on how that process is working so far? Any reservations about reviewing those projects for I, Sandbox? I think that um, it's unclear whether um, like two people from the same company can sponsor a project that's from, you know, that was in, uh, in sub that was initiated in their in their company. Or like, I just don't know the rules around sponsoring and if I can sponsor the same project that someone from the same company can sponsor. So if we could clarify that um, and document it, that'd be really helpful. I think there are some patterns we've been following. Um, like we try to make sure there's not a conflict of interest or anything, but we just really need to document it. So uh, I, I, I just have a, a quick note that I caught on this. The reason we went to three TOC sponsors was the TOC could have two seats of people from a company and they didn't want any company to be able to choose it. So does that mean people from a company can then sponsor a project out of their own company because you still need more sponsors beyond the number of people who can be on the TOC? I think that was part of the discussion before. I don't, uh, I don't think that, um there's an issue with sponsoring something from your company because there's multiple sponsors. I'm just curious about whether two out of the three sponsors can be from the same company. Sarah has very rightly pointed out the uh, establish the conflict of interest guidelines issue that I think already exists. Oh, great. Uh, Thanks. Yeah. Never mind. So then. we absolutely should. Uh, Wait, so, yeah. Sorry. No, go ahead, Sarah. <laughs> issue exists but the resolution of that issue does not and so we raised this from SIG security and um, the TOC must have been very busy and didn't respond which is fine so we had established a resolution a conflict of interest guidelines for the security review specifically um, and it would be great if somebody on the TOC wanted to, or you know, you wanted to nominate someone to like dig into this and figure this out generally. And so I think this is another example of, you know, like we just more specific details would be great. So um, so maybe Paris could add the um, specific issue, like this specific issue. And I think that, you know, like there could be a number of different ways that this can be resolved. We can collect all the different minute things, or maybe there could be like a general, when there is a decision to be had, let's make sure X, Y, Z people from ABC companies do or don't do things. Uh, awesome, thanks. I um, am happy to also just help this, assign this issue to myself and um, help chase this down if that's, yeah. That sounds great. Do you folks on the call, sorry, do folks on the call have an opinion one way or the other?
I think we don't want to be doing people a disservice or doing projects a disservice by saying, you know, you now have to get three out of nine sponsors rather than three out of 11. Uh, I, I don't know that there's an easy answer. I, yeah. I think it's just important to document it so it's clear. I think all having it just not be documented that this is our conflict of interest guidelines and this is what we follow is probably more of the issue than what we end up deciding. Um, given that we don't have 50 people to choose from, I'm not sure that we can say you absolutely can't have two people from the same company. It makes sense to me. Me too. Okay. Yeah, we should close Thanks. on this soon. Yeah, and I think it's probably more important that there's nobody like in the direct line of like leadership of the project itself, right? Like that it's not like the person isn't somehow like directly um, really representing the project, right? Like it's, they didn't author it and architect it and write it and it's their baby. Be. I mean, I'm not exactly. sure how we articulate that, but I get it. Um, so are you volunteering right. to create those guidelines, Sarah? Do we have someone assigned to that action item? I, so we have linked from that some guidelines, um, SIG security. So I don't have time this month to draft this. I would be happy to like comment, review, whatever. Um, but like I, um, I'd want some other input on like what it should be. We can work on that. Saad, if you want to work on that together, maybe we can knock that out. Yeah. So yeah, yeah you can I'd ping me on Slack. To. Who's the okay. saying I'd be happy to also? Uh, this is Saad. Saad, great. Wonderful. Thank you, Erin. Thank you, Saad. Thank you, Sarah. Great idea. Okay, so uh, that aside, so operator framework. Framework. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, operator framework, there is some uh, initiatives going on inside that, that Dan has uh, kind of kicked off around uh, like a kind of discovery mechanism. I, I think he's very close to actually publishing a document on what he's proposing there, but it has some overlap with Operator Hub. Um, and he has at this point asked us to sort of hold off making a decision on Operator Framework until he publishes that. Uh, he, I think the whole coronavirus thing has rather uh, taken some of his time. We were expecting that document to be published some time ago uh yeah but that is the reason for the uh, something of a, a pause on operator framework right now uh and then i'll go michelle you're you're driving that yeah yes is I there am. something that's requiring them to physically be there i guess i don't understand the the reference to that of why it's on hold, what, what more you guys need? Um. Um, so we need, so this is something that Dan convened with some folks from Helm. Uh, I'm not sure what other interested parties I, I have seen, but I've forgotten um, uh, around operator discovery and Helm chart discovery. Um, and because operator hub is part of operator framework, probably makes sense for us to at least have received that document before we make a decision on operator framework. Um, that uh, there is a, a point to which there is a, you know, a point at which I feel like we just need to move ahead if we don't get that document, but uh, well, hopefully meantime, it's a matter of Katie, days. Yeah. In the meantime, Katie is, um, has volunteered to take up the, uh, TOC role of um, reviewing the due diligence and um, uh, taking up any other responsibilities to move it forward. So wonderful progress. Wonderful. Katie, okay. if you have anything to add, I didn't want to, sorry if I spoke for you. Is Katie on the call? 
uh, she is, and she's unmuted. Um, maybe she's having some uh, technical issues. So just in the interest of uh, making sure we have clear communication, the PR has Chris asking for a TOC vote. So if we are requiring this document, could we please add that to the PR so that we're being consistent about what we're asking for and why it's being held off since the PR indicates moving forward with a vote? And that was five days ago. Sure, okay, I'll add a comment about that. Okay, thank you. That's, that's on 303, yeah? Yes, here, I can send you the link. I have it. Right. Yeah. I just, I just know that sometimes not all the projects come to this call if they're not presenting, so I'm not sure they're necessarily getting the information when we talk about it outside of it. It's a very good point, yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, so hopefully we can make progress on... Uh, at least those two sandbox ones in, you know, a matter of days rather than weeks. And uh, Operator Framework and Argo, Katie and Michelle, own those to drive forward by the sounds of it. Yeah. Okay. Great. Uh, do we have, what else do we have? We have four minutes for Michelle to talk a little bit about graduation. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> I was worried this was going to happen, so go nuts. <laughs> it's all good. Um, okay, so uh, the graduation process as it stands um, in the process document that, um, that the community worked on, uh, and Liz uh, helped drive and Sarah helped drive, uh, that um, uh, document states that basically graduation follows incubation. Um, when Liz and I were reviewing this the other day, uh, we found that, or yesterday, um, we found that uh, it like maybe could use a little bit more meat and maybe the incubation process is uh, a little bit more hands-on than the graduation process needs to be, or the proposal process, excuse me. Um, so well, we came up with this um, and it's a proposal, it's in a PR, um, so we welcome community feedback. Um, essentially, uh, the, uh, the project that wants to uh, graduate would fill out a the graduation proposal template, which is exactly what projects have already been doing. Um, essentially, it's a copy paste of the graduation criteria. And at the bottom, um, there's a spot to link the incub uh, previous incubation DD document that the project has already completed, and a section which allows um, the project to address any concerns that were brought up in incubation. Um, so once that proposal gets pull requested into the CNCF TOC repo, uh, that project would get scheduled for a presentation in front of the TOC and the rest of the community. Um, this is just because, uh, you know, like it feels like everybody should be involved in the graduation process and have like one place to talk about um, a project that is graduating. Perhaps there are cross SIG concerns that SIG chairs want to bring up here. Um, essentially, it should just be highlighted in front of the entire community. Um, the, once the project gets scheduled, there's also time like for the relevant SIGs to do their, you know, come up with a recommendation either via mailing list or um, within the uh, a SIG meeting. And that's up to the SIG. Uh, the project would present to the TOC. Um, essentially, the project is to address how it's grown in incubation, um, address any concerns uh, from the incubation DD document or from the SIG, um, and then per, you know, have case studies if they like, um, and take Q&A from the community. After that, there will be a two-week period of time for a public comment on the TOC mailing list, after which uh, that would be you know, turned into a TOC vote. Um, so that's, if you go to the next slide, um, there is uh, the proposal template that I've um, outlined here that's in the pull request as well. Um, I think that's all of the main bits. I don't know what happened in chat, but there's like five things that happened in chat. So if somebody has any concerns, let me, um, let me know. And also this is very, I mean, if we hate this as a community, it's completely okay. I just wanted to um, get something, get a proposed solution in there since folks are waiting to graduate um, uh, and, and kind of go from there. Um, would love any thoughts. Should we include um, 
SIGs in the process somewhere? Uh, yeah, so the SIGs are in the process. Um, Amy, if you wouldn't mind going to the last slide. Um, so once the project submits a PR and subsequently gets scheduled for a presentation, we're asking that SIGs review that project um, in the mailing list or in their SIG meeting uh, to come up with any comments that they would want to bring up um, at the presentation. Okay, cool. Thank you. No problem. This is your last slide in here. Yeah, that's all I had. Okay. Um, oh, got so, it. Okay, I wasn't sure. There was another slide that you were looking for to be able to review. Big pardon. Thank you. Um, that's all I've got. Open to comments. Oh, we're at past time. Uh, open to comments on the PR. This is important stuff. Um, it is sounding like the March 17th meeting should be a conversation about graduation process as well as an invitation towards projects that think that they are ready to come present for the TOC meeting based on item number three. Liz, is yeah. that a fair reading? Yeah, I think that would be good. Yeah, assuming and no objections to this wanna, process. Yeah. We can talk I don't want to throw... I don't want to throw too much out there because like I, I didn't know if this process would be controversial or if people have issues with it. Um, it is, if there are controver uh, controversies, if you know, or uh, contentious points, let's go ahead and raise them. But if there aren't, I'd really love to move this along in the next few days so we can get that graduation, um, uh, get a presentation meeting up for graduation. Just because people look to graduate before KubeCon we talked about this last KubeCon too, and then prioritized reviews for graduation within the month before KubeCon. And if there's a way that we could alter the process a little bit so that these projects could kind of come across the line um, and celebrate at KubeCon, I don't know if that's a valid thing that we want to encourage or not, but I know it happens. Um, so let's discuss it. Uh, again, I don't want to th throw too much out there at one time. So let's discuss this proposal. And then once we've come to a consensus, let's, uh, let's see if there's a way to fast track or if there is sufficient time to get in, um, get the projects in before KubeCon. So that's all I've got. Sounds good. All right, we are slightly over time. So thank you everyone for joining us today and uh, we will talk very soon. Good to see you all. Please put comments thank in. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.